Okay, hello everybody. So I'm here with Melanie Ewan and I've brought her on because she's actually part of the first cohort of the Fast Track Your Business program. We started in January, so about halfway through now of the active modules and I thought it would be really helpful to have her come on and tell you all a little bit about why she chose to join the program, maybe some of the concerns she had and what results she's seen so far. So um, Melanie, thanks so much for your time and maybe you can start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself and, and what your business is, how long you've been going and so on and then we'll take it from there. Sure. Yes, of course. I'm really happy to be here and to be able to share a little bit about my journey on um, in this mastermind as well. It's really helped me so far. So to back up a bit in terms of who I am, I am a business advisor, a writer, uh, as well as an educator helping impact entrepreneurs thrive on purpose. And what I mean by that is that I work with these entrepreneurs to help them define and own their voice, their vision, as well as what they really want so they can get to a place of clarity and intentional action. I'm also co-founder of uh, Volition Advisors, and we're an advisory firm that works with particularly early stage entrepreneurs um, to get past really critical now what moments and um, pain points in their journey. So that's a little bit about me, and I've been in the entrepreneur space for about three years, three and a half, actually more, more than that now, <laughs> time flies, yes. three and a half years, and I have multiple other hats, and I'll get into that a little bit later. It's one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, join the mastermind, just to kind of focus a bit more, but... Um, that's kind of, in essence, the context of, of who I am as it pertains to the business mastermind. Great. I love that. Thrive on purpose. That's such a powerful idea. So that yeah. sounds fantastic. <laughs> and maybe there you mentioned, you know, why you want to join the program. So first, mm. how did you find me is always an interesting question. And then, you know, what was it about this particular program that appealed that um, felt like it was what you needed at the moment? Yeah. How did I find you? That's a really <laughs> great question. Probably it was either Digital Nomad Girls group or some other Facebook group. Um, recently in uh, November, I decided to go, well, no, I decided a while ago, but I finally went remote, 100% um, remote with my business. I moved from Vancouver to uh, Madrid and I therefore joined a lot of these kind of digital nomad and online um communities to try to um to connect with community first on that digital level and then as I worked up my my courage and my Spanish to then connect in person with people here as well um so I think I met I I found you through Facebook I assume um and then through the five-day challenge that was in January on I can't even remember what it was about client, client generation was yeah client generation <laughs> yes because that was something that for me um, kind of sales and client generation have always been difficult kind mm -hmm. of pain point for me. So um, that really attracted me to be in this really comfortable space and to learn with with my peers online. Um, so that's how I found you. And then I won the one of the scholarships to get into the mm -hmm. mastermind. And so that was really exciting. Um, and why I decided to, uh, you asked why I decided to join the mastermind, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. <laughs> um, three, there are three reasons. Um, so one is that I'm kind of at a critical uh, transition point in my career uh, and within Volition. So historically, I've been known as kind of a grant researcher and writer because my previous life was 10 years working in the federal government. And I can speak government speak. I can translate really well between um, between inventors and, and entrepreneurs and uh, programmers and whoever you happen to be, uh, whatever you're trying to sell to the government to get money from them or funding of some variety from them um, or support. So that's what I've been known for, but I'm really transitioning in terms of my outward facing role with Volition and I'm wanting to step into a different kind of space. And I, and I still like when I started the program, I didn't know what that even was. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of kind of like fogginess. I knew I wanted to change. I've been working on this for like six months around kind of evolving my personal brand, but it was still super preliminary. So um, that was one point is to get kind of a, a bit more clear on how to transition within my own company. I also wanted to define my own personal brand in a different way. Mm -hmm. I realized that I hadn't really done that well and that there was all these different narratives of who I was in Canada. I was known for supporting women in tech and I'm known for um, doing this grant research and writing. I'm known for being a writer in some circles, but it didn't, I wasn't really controlling what that looked like. And then I wasn't controlling why I left Vancouver even. And people had these reasons floating around out there as to why I'd left and that I'd completely left all of my, my um, businesses and organizations, which I hadn't. So to me, it was like, okay, I really need to take control of this. Um, and the last reason was to gain perspective, new perspectives. So I've been working in, within this startup and business space in Vancouver 
and a little bit more across Canada in general. But I uh, was in this new space in, in Europe and in this digital online community um, and wanted to learn from someone new and learn from a new coach and get new perspectives that I could then apply. Great, fantastic. I love that. And I think, you know, those are quite sort of important moments. This is a transitioning from focusing on one particular thing to another. That's always a good time to really review the basics again and make sure you're sort of clear on what you stand for and so on. And also I love and and I admire people, you know, who have all these different um, strings to their bows and it can be challenging then to bring all that together. And when we first get started, I think we do just kind of do a few random things and so on. But then as we, you know, as time passes, then we are able to maybe think a bit more strategically and coherently Mm -hmm. about bringing all that together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you've worked with coaches and, and programs like this before? I've not been in a mastermind before, but I have worked with a career coach before and she was an absolute, I only had a few sessions with her, mm-hmm. um, but she was, it was an absolute game changer mm-hmm. for me. It was more around confidence building around public speaking, actually, which people who know me now uh, do not believe that public speaking has ever been an issue for me, but I was and still am an extreme introvert for a lot of my the first 20 years of my life and then decided that was no longer going to serve my goals in life Mm -hmm. I wanted to change the world and you can't do that if you don't talk to anyone about it so (laughs) decided I spend the next it's been like 15 years now of, of working on that and she helped me um on public speaking in uh, a work setting. So I, cause I'd gotten comfortable in like academia and in mm. government and in these different spaces. And then I was in this completely new community of entrepreneurs and innovators. And I had that imposter syndrome feeling and, and I'd been asked to speak to moderate a p- panel and I was like, I can't do that. So she really helped me at that transition, another transition point in my life. So um, I already knew the value of that. And uh, I have a lot of kind of coaches in my life around me. So it's been, um, it's been a very, especially in the last year, I've developed a lot, a bigger coach network, I Mm -hmm. guess. Um, And I'm consistently uh, impressed by, by what you can get out of working with a coach and what you can learn about yourself Mm -hmm. um, that then benefits your business or whatever you are wanting to do in such a really profound way. Um, So I, yeah, sort of in answer to your question, sort of, yes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, it's great that you see that value. And that's fantastic, because you come across so confidently now on camera, and I'm sure speaking as well. So clearly, that work has been worthwhile for you. So it's great to absolutely. focus on different aspects um, throughout different points of business. And you know, very experienced uh, business owners have coaches as well, right? And when exactly. I started, I was a business and marketing expert. And I thought I don't need anyone to work with. But of course, I do. And I now work with someone too. So um that's yeah. great. So it sounded like you had the positive coaching experience. Um, you also had some very clear objectives. Was there anything that was sort of a, oh, I'm not sure if this is right or, you know, any doubts or fears you had going into the program? Yeah. So I, the, really the monetary investment in something, mm-hmm. in someone that I didn't know personally mm-hmm. and in um, a program that I didn't know as well. So I'd done the five day challenge, which really helped me to see the value and to see what you were like as an executive coach or as an a, a whatever your title of coach is, (laughs) Um, whatever someone needs in a coach. Um, So I was able to see how you worked that way. Um, And then I also did some more digging and looked on your website and I looked at your podcast and these kinds Mm -hmm. of things, which really, which really helped me to get past. And the other thing I did is I looked through all the criteria or all the, um, the modules Mm -hmm. and aligned that with some work I'd already been doing around my personal goals for the year. I went over it with my husband because obviously it would be, um, a monetary investment. And I looked out over it with my business partner as well, because that was going to, we're going to use some of the business funds that we have for this to help, um, to help increase my own education. So it was a matter of talking it through, looking at it and ensuring that it did match my own goals. And then also feeling that there was a fit with you and the kind of, um, the kind of teaching that you provide and your values that shine through in the work that you do. Um, it was just like, yes, this feels like a fit, like you, you speak to me. And that's a really important thing I, I think to have in your coach is to feel like you are being heard even because the person speaking is speaking in a way that you hear them and you, you mm-hmm. um, relate to it. So, and you like, you've often said to find a coach that's a few steps ahead of you, mm-hmm. but embodies kind of the values that you have and where mm-hmm. you want to be. And so that's what it was for me. Um, and that was an important process to decide that this was a good fit. But mm-hmm. it was also a leap of faith, which we need to do when we're business owners and take those take those calculated risks and such. So it was kind of a combination of two mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, it's true. You can never be 100% certain if it's a new program, someone, as you said, you don't know personally and so on. But I guess that's the advantage. And it's lovely to hear that you 
do feel that you know my style and my message resonates with you and also that the challenge the podcast everything um gave you an opportunity to sort of sample that because I think in the past it was just a leap of faith right we just throw money at something hoping it'd be okay and I think a lot of people have been burned by that and maybe paid money in a program that they didn't get what they wanted out of it so that's great Mm -hmm. to give an opportunity to to everybody to sort of get an idea is this a good fit and I'm sure for some people I'm not a good fit so that's good that they work that out before they um invest their time and money really exactly Mm -hmm. great so about halfway through now um so what have you learned so far have you been surprised by anything what do you like most about it is it what you expected oh oh I don't I don't even know if it's what I expected it's just so much deeper than what I expected I think Um, so especially the first two modules, which are really, or three modules even, which are really foundational modules. Um, and they are kind of kind of going to pave the way for a strategic, um, strategic planning and development going forward in the next few modules. But, um, at halfway through, yeah, it's been absolutely, um, expansive is a word I might use for it. So, um, I've already had a massive aha moment around what my, um, my personal why is, uh, which, I I thought like I for the last ten years I've had this narrative around what my why is, and then with the work that we did in module one, as well as I sought other, I sought out other complementary um, exercises I could do. Then with all of this work that I've been doing, and then in module two and three as well, I had this moment of like, okay, that's not even really what my why was. My why was this, which goes so much deeper. And as soon as I found that, it was like this like you know, there was a click and then I automatically, um, purchased my domain name to build my personal brand, which made sense at the time as well, because we were going through the personal branding, um, content. So it all kind of fit together of like, once I had that foundation, then I was able to, to better utilize the content that was provided in the, in the, the, um, the next two modules to, um, to have that new clarity and confidence to start building that personal brand. I put out two blog articles that had been stewing for a couple of years around my personal story and my narrative um, that once I, yeah, once I had the foundations, it's just like, yes, this makes sense. And then, so that was kind of like the, the that's the big thing for me right now, big exciting thing. But um, also in a particularly module two and three, there's some really amazing tangible, um, uh, uh, next steps that I can take mm-hmm. as well as next steps that my clients could take. So I, uh, had a call with a discovery call with a client a couple of days ago, and there was a lot of stuff that the finding the first customer and, um, building your personal brand content that we went through, I was able to say, Hey, like this, these are some steps that you can take. This is something that I've been doing mm-hmm. and helped, um, him move through some of those initial pieces. Um, so as I've been able to apply it to, my big, my big picture, um, which is helping me with my personal brand, but also been able to apply it to um, my clients who are asking for help as well as to my business. So we're doing a lot of like 2019 visioning right now with my business. And I um, have kind of been doing a parallel doing the exercises both for my own for me and my personal brand as well at the same time for my company. Um, And then seeing how they compare, which is also really interesting to do. I know there's a lot of people out there who when they're thinking about personal brand and if their business is closely tied to their personal personal brand, there's a lot of confusion around Mm -hmm. um, what's me and what's my business. So it's been really interesting for me to do both and then, and then compare them Mm -hmm. and see how I fit into my business and how my, my personal brand and my vision and my mission and my values and my desired feelings and all these things fit in there. So it's been, um, it's, yeah, it's been quite uh, expansive from that big picture all the way down to really actionable steps and, I'm really excited because I think that there'll be more aha moments mm-hmm. along the way. And I think that I have like the beginnings of exactly what I want to do next, like the one step approach mm-hmm. that you take. Mm-hmm. I have those ideas of the next one step and the research I need to do to get there and the actions I need to take. Um, and I don't have it written down yet, but I'm being patient with myself, mm-hmm. which is something I'm practicing more so. Um, and it's just really exciting. And I honestly like I keep going back and listening to to the recordings. And I think that's something I'll probably continue to do um, going forward. I've, I think I've listened to the branding module recordings like three times already. Okay. And I keep hearing new things, <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's been um, really, really useful for me in ways that I didn't anticipate. Hmm. 
I love that word expansive that's such a good word and I'm so happy to hear that you've appreciated that it went deeper because I'm always a bit reluctant to just teach the the branding the marketing and so on I'm really passionate as you know about sort of the reimagining success and the bigger picture and so on um so really glad not only that you enjoyed that and were surprised by that maybe but also that that has given you results because the danger is I think people get impatient they want to right away know how am I going to do the Facebook stuff how am I going to get clients Mm -hmm. and really as it sounds like for you the foundational work actually you know, and it was only a few weeks we spent on that. So it's not like we uh, slowed you down too much, but that really gave you the foundation no. to open things up. No, well, that's the thing. Like even like taking that time then then was like a catalyst hmm. for for projects that had been sitting and I'd been wanting to do, but didn't know how to start. So it ended up, you know, when you slow down and step back for a moment, it can help propel you forward and in new directions you didn't think of, which I also foresee happening so yeah fantastic okay well Mm. thank you so much for sharing that and I guess if someone's watching this and they're sort of teetering on the edge they're not sure is this something I should do is it right for me um is it worth the time the money and so on what what would you say to someone who's hesitating a little bit um so I obviously for me it was it's definitely been been worth all of the the time and the effort and energy I think it's perfect for someone who um if you are well, I mean, it's, it's fast track your business. So if you're at a point where you know, you have kind of a foundation already, maybe not like we're, what, what we're talking about, like the vision foundation, or maybe you've done that, but you want to revisit it like I have, but you have kind of a foundation of, of a business, of an idea, and you are wanting, and you're feeling, you have kind of, ex- have those now what moments, and you have those pain points, and you aren't sure yet what to do with your finances, or what to do with your brand, and there's just these elements that you see in the curriculum for this fast pace your business, uh, fast track your business. If you see elements that you've been questioning, it's a really supportive um, environment to come into and um, work through it using some really um, intentional exercises, speaking to people who are going through really very similar things to you, even if they're in completely different fields, mm-hmm. having access to an executive coach to speak to about this is amazing as well. It's it's something that that it's really great if you have the time and energy to put into it. It's something that you want to do if you are ready to invest in yourself mm-hmm. and invest in your business. Um, and I think that that is a really powerful moment to be in, in your, in your career as an entrepreneur or freelancer or whatever you happen to be. So um, yeah, I'd say if you're at that point of like, I want to invest in, in myself and my business, this speaks to me. I've seen Anna speak. And I think that there's some, there's a, there's a connection there. Then really challenge yourself to take to take that leap um and and I hope that it goes really well and feel free to reach out to me as well and ask me how it's all been I'm happy to to help people with any questions they have oh thank you that's very kind of you I'm sure there might be someone who wants to uh, pick your brains and hear a little bit more um but that's great I think that is an important point because as we talked right at the beginning it could be that you're at a transition point or that you're ready to step things up Mm -hmm. You may mm-hmm. not be, and there are moments when we're not ready to invest either financially, you know, we're having other things going on in our personal lives or yeah. health wise or family or just in the business, it doesn't feel right. Um, so that is an important question to ask yourself. So that's a really uh, yeah. great point to add there as well. Um, right. Anything else you want to add that we haven't covered or any last thoughts? Um, I'm sure I have more stuff that I haven't <laughs> covered. <laughs> There's always so much. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's just been a really great experience. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the end and have kind of, um, a look back at how it's all, how it's all, um, gone. I doodle every, all the time now. That's something that's just been since the beginning of 2019. So I've been doodling, uh, my exercises and when I'm watching the content I'm doodling and I, I'm loving going back and and looking at the journey from the first, Mm -hmm. from the first module to the, and it will be to the end. So, um, I'm just curious to see how it's all going to, going to play out and I'm excited to share what that ends up looking like at the end Mm. Um, but yeah I think that's that's all for me it's been it's been really uh expensive yeah expansive that is the key word I love that and I love your doodles I wish I did those they're fantastic I should almost package those up and um sell them via the uh, program I think they're a great added benefit yeah. um but yeah absolutely and we are you know you talked about the big vision the big picture and so on and we are getting more concrete now with the branding and marketing and the final yeah. couple of modules are going to be on financials and really implementation um, and I'm also really happy to hear that you're going back and listening to the recordings again because it's so easy yeah. just whether it's the free challenge or the modules and so on so easy just to listen super superficially I do the same with podcasts while I'm doing the dishes or going for a walk or whatever and then we sort of don't actually change anything so that one step and actually implementing the anchoring in our day-to-day is really key so yeah 
good to know. Um, but thank you so much, Melanie. I've loved working with you. We'll continue to enjoy working with you, I'm sure, and seeing the progress you're making. Um, thank you for taking the time. I'm sure it was very helpful for, I hope it was very helpful for people watching. And uh, thank you also for your kind offer to um, answer any other questions. So thank you so much and best of luck with um, the, the next module. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Thank you. <laughs>